So we're back here at the rigging table and we're gonna move forward with our shark rigs. Last time we left off, we did some spinning rigs and now we're gonna maneuver into the kayak rigs. So naturally, when you're kayaking baits out off the beach, you're gonna be using bigger hooks because you have bigger baits. You could use, you know, hull baits, half baits, heads. I mean, search any video out there. You'd be surprised what people don't use for bait. I mean, literally anything and everything. So with this style of bait, excuse me, with this style of rig, you'd more likely than not be using a breakaway rig. So that means when the shark takes the rig, he's gonna bite the breakaway line that's attached to your weight, however far down, and you're just gonna be straight at the fish. He's gonna be on the hook on your leader and straight to your main line with no inhibitions in between. But let's assume that you can't do a breakaway rig this time. Let's assume you get to the beach, your buddy meets you with a kayak and you wanna drop something out. You're not ready, you don't have a brick, you don't have light mono, nothing, no problem. So we're gonna do this rig with a stretch of line. We're gonna pretend it's a little bit longer just for the sake of the video. We're gonna do it short so we could see all aspects of it. And then I'm gonna go into the sinker part. So let's start. We're going after some big fish, so we wanna beef this up a little bit. So we got our hook, right? We put our leader line through the eye of the hook. We're gonna tie an overhand knot, nothing crazy. See, just like that. Now with that overhand knot, I'm gonna go back through the hook. Now this part's kind of, it's not that it's tricky, but I just gotta pay attention. So back through the hook, and then we're gonna go through the inside of that knot. So at this point, so at this point, we're gonna have something like this. It looks like a big knot on the end of that hook. And then we can kind of just pull it tight. I'm gonna work it down here. There we go. So that's about right. Could be a little bit bigger if you need it to be, but hook's flying around, so it's all good. So now, we are gonna move that first crimp into position. I just did a quick little twist down here and it's not locked down yet, but we will fix that. That's just to keep it straight while I get my crimp in order. All right, I let go of that twist. So let's do it this way. We got our loop on the hook and we got our first crimp down there to keep it together. That will not come out. So we're gonna lock her down. You remember, got our crimp left from last time. I just threw some grease on it. Probably can't even see it, but a bunch of blue grease in there. And we're gonna go all the way to the end to the 2.3 millimeter slot. And uh, give her a crush. All right, we're lined up, second crush. I'd rather take a second or two longer and do it right. Third crush, okay. First crimp is in working order. Everything is battened down. And now we're gonna do our twist. This is where that second crimp comes in handy. This is what we got, let's recap one more time. Got a hook locked up, first crimp intact, tag line, and second crimp. Now we're gonna do our twist. This is just to give some rigidity to the line in case their teeth goes on it. Got that totally doubled up. You can go up as far in the line as you want. I'm gonna stop about right here for today. Get her on that second crimp. And that is what we're working with. And give her an extra twist for good luck. Good. 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 All right. So now this end of the rig is totally done. Look at that, that is a hard ball of hard mono that is never going to break or never gonna go anywhere. 
And we got this twisted piece of leader here. Again, extra rigidity, extra strength. If a big fish bites down, he's a lot less likely to do some damage. And then we got our beautiful strand of 400 pound extra harbor moy up here. Not that it's different from the bottom, but maybe I just like saying it. <laughs> well, we're still on the spool here. And we're gonna take off some line. So if this was, if this was out in the field right now, I would probably want to make this. I mean, you could, why not go 20 feet? That's what we did with that sand tiger. I mean, you, you could really go as long as you want. Why wouldn't you? If you have, you know what? I'm gonna recant that. Let me go backwards for a second because we're doing a different type of rig here. With the breakaway, I, uh, you could go as long as you want. It's all leader. It's not gonna do anything but help you, especially with that sharp skin on those sharks. With this technique, 20 feet is probably good. You don't want your sinker causing too much of a bow in the line, but let's move forward in that. That must have sounded really good. So, in a case like this, we don't want to use a fish finder because if we do that, we're going to have something like this in our line. They're going to be our bait sitting on the bottom, and I have our line up on the shore, and that sinker in the middle is going to cause a bow like that, effectively. Also, when you go to drop your bait, that fish finder, if it's all loose, it's going to drop, you know, like almost instantaneously off the shore and your bait is not going to go anywhere. You're just going to have a sinker that's stuck five feet in front of you and a bait that's floating around. God knows how far out you paddled it. And it just will not work out. You won't stay tight. You'll probably just get pushed whichever way the current's going. So this fixes that. This is something I put in the middle of my rigs. We have a duo lock on a barrel swivel between three beads. And this thing has a barrel swivel on either side. Check it out, barrel swivel, crimp to mono, and then barrel swivel, crimp, crimp to mono. This thing is completely self-contained. So when I put it on my rig, we're gonna take our weight system. The double beaded side is gonna be on the bottom towards your rig. I just want it as far away from anything essential as possible. So why not put a second bead if it doesn't do us any harm? Right, it's in there. Tight. Yep, I'm close. Watch out for crotch lock, always. And squeeze number one. Squeeze number two. And squeeze number three. So this is what we have. We did our twist method to the mono here, crimped it up. Got some nice tight line going all the way up the rig that we're pretending is about 20 feet. Go into our weight device, crimp to a barrel swivel, three bead system to a duo lock and barrel. That's where your weight goes. And then we finish it up off top here with another crimp and a barrel. So at this point, you could take this end and you could tie this straight to your main line or you could take another piece of leader and put it up in front of it, in which case you'd possibly want to make this shorter. Because if, you, if you're doing that, then you don't really need this bite line to be that long. But if you're doing this rig, keep in mind that the length of your bite line now effectively becomes your presentation. So if you want that rig to be floating around, if, excuse me, if you want that bait to be floating around, then you're going to want to give it some more length. But just use your best judgment going out there and Assessing your situation properly. If you feel that you're getting too much flutter in the bait, shorten it up. If you feel that you're not getting enough, that it's staying too close to the bottom, you may want to give it you know, more line to flutter around in the current. There are so many other ways of rigging these things. I mean, we can get into some serious crap where we put some floats on these rigs and try to tie, and not time out, what is it? Try to measure out where it's gonna sit in the water column. These guys from Terra Firma Tackle made these rigs recently and they're really honing in on that technique. I mean, the way I do it is very primitive, but they have a whole system up for sale on their website. And it's this really nice float ball with a perfectly done rig. And they have it all measured out to sit, I believe it's 12 feet under the surface. Uh, you should check them out because that's kind of what I'm getting at here. I do all this myself, but I'm really looking forward to buying some of their stuff because I could always learn too. 
Hopefully this video got my point across and you guys get out there and catch some monsters. I'll see you next time. Take care.